Greetings. Yo, the black light. Now let's get it. Let's go across the pond to the motherland. Let's see what Dr. Mumbai is talking about. Hello and welcome to the Dr. Mumbi Show. My name is Dr. Mumbi Saraki. How are you doing? How's everything going? I pray you're well, fam, in all your ways and that you are living your best life. Thanks to every single person that subscribes to the channel. You guys are absolutely amazing. Uh, go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for all the likes and shares and subscribes, fam, and for all those people who financially support us through our you know, PayPal and our Patreon account. I'm here in a secret garden somewhere in the Gambia reporting live and direct and uh, what I wanted to bring is a story, thanks to everyone by the way, all my secret journalists out there who are always sharing, you know, very important stories. Now this is a story that was shared a couple of weeks ago. It's actually a, a research uh, report that was released by Cambridge University last year. But with everything that's happening with the coronavirus, I really do believe that it is time, you know, it is important for us to pay attention because as I said, you know, we're looking at the patterns on this channel because what we've seen is that you know the enemy of our soul the destroyer you know he often actually um how do i put this he will often tell you what he's doing because he needs humanity to buy into it so that it can actually manifest on earth so we need to be convinced that there's a massive virus pandemic out there that's going to kill millions of people before the virus can even penetrate spiritually and physically and actually do that but those are stories for other days and if you you know if you're into this kind of stuff definitely check out my new channel dr mumbi live but what happened is that cambridge university actually released a report last year where they said that the world must prepare for biological weapons that target ethnic groups based on genetic you know based on genetics now this is something I said you know last year I was there was this massive drive where a lot of our african-american brothers and sisters really wanted to find out who they were but what we found is that they were actually creating a massive database of African DNA and they wanted to expand that uh, we also saw that that governments like the British government were actually keeping the DNA samples and the images of certain criminals but mainly black youth in an attempt to kind of control them and and you know they were saying and, and there was a lot of racial profiling but they were trying to say it would help them to have this criminal database but what is worrying is that now all these databases the technology um, and this is what Cambridge University was actually saying their center for the study for existential risk they actually said that the government was failing to prepare uh, for human dis you know human driven catastrophic risks that could lead to mass harm and social collapse uh, and they talked about how advances in science such as genetic engineering and artificial intelligence as well as autonomous you know autonomous vehicles have opened up you know a whole new you know Pandora's box where you know if the enemy of our souls they were talking about you know if a terrorist organization was you know to get a hold of this kind of um, you know access to these this kind of technology they could do a lot of harm and we've seen all the James Bond movies you know which talk of this massive human villain but what if the human villain is actually the powers that be and these globalist government that are trying to now put into place you know a militaristic government and they're trying to limit you know the movement of people and they they've achieved so much from what they're calling the quote-unquote corona virus or is it a corona hoax stories for other days uh, you know what let's take a short break we'll be right back yeah, from the motherland to Michigan, number one, the boxing club, so we can knock out, knock the, knock that sucker out. Check this one out. Did you know that the amount of sunlight that hits the Earth in two hours is enough to run the entire planet for a year, and that the technology actually turns out to be cheaper? And fossil fuels. Now I want to let that sink in for a second. What I'm here to talk to you about today is possibilities and inspiration and how this relates to solar technology in Detroit and abroad. I'm here today building a possibility, one that involves cleaner air, safer streets and alleys, and more neighborhoods powered by solar. But 
in order for me to share this with you, I have to tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Ali Dairul, and I'm a solutionary. I like to find solutions to complex problems. I'm a product of Detroit, born and raised. Always had an interest in science and technology. I attended public charter school, one of which was Insaroma Institute, led by this man, Malik Yakini, uh, who does a lot of work in education and food advocacy now. I would end up getting a degree, a master's degree in mechanical engineering and alternative energy systems from Oakland University. And this is actually where I got inspired. On my senior project, I was part of a case study to design a net zero energy home for a professor out in Rochester Hills. And net zero meaning that the home produced as much electricity as it used, so at the end of the year, the bill went net zero. The idea was designed using various solutions to accomplish this goal. And we could employ solar panels, geothermal, windmill, you name it. The possibilities were endless as long as it met the goal. I thought then, if this were possible in this type of setting, could this be applied to a more urban type of setting? It was actually around this time that Malik gave me a call from uh, the farm <laughs> to uh, see if we could design a solution for a seven and a half acre urban farm that he now ran and operated called Detown Farm. I thought that this would be a great opportunity to give back, but also a good opportunity to use my newly acquired skill sets. The farm didn't have much for the project, but they did have uh, a 40 foot shipping container and 10 donated solar panels. I knew that we would need more for this project, so what I did was use a tool that I often use called a possibility table, where you have a defined written intention on what it is that you're trying to do, a clear pictured outcome on what that out actually looks like in the real world, what you have, which could be personnel, equipment, resources, funding, and what you need to fill the gap and meet the requirements. So I did the table for the farm, and as you could see, we would need lots to finish this project, but the first thing that we would need would be a team. And this is actually when the Writer Cooperative Industries was born. But it would actually turn out to be less of a company, but really more of a family comprised of engineers, technicians, project managers, people from the community from which we serve that also have a vested interest in the sustainability of, the, of, of our environment. So with that, the team in place, um, we started the design process and that took about, like a baby, about nine months to do. There were lots of late nights, uh, building supplier relationships, enlisting uh, support from community and companies to help support the initiative. In the end, the labor portion of it really only took about two weeks and gave you the beautiful energy, off-grid energy station that you see here, Dyrule Energy Station. This was a feat for all of us, and although the system was designed to deliver several thousand watts of power, we discovered that the idea was the most powerful thing that the idea that such an off-grid system could exist in the middle of this urban congested area created a whole new possibility for people that didn't exist before. And this inspired the community. I mean, this inspired us. So what did we do? We took on more solar projects <laughs> to continue to inspire and help bring in a new green energy paradigm. So some of these projects would be the first solar power lawnmower for Highland Park to show that you could beautify your lawns without having to emit an ounce of greenhouse gases. Also, the first Wi-Fi enabled solar street light to show that you could have free internet access for a neighborhood powered by a free energy source. What well, probably most notable would be the Power Up program, which is, uh, which is a citywide bulk purchasing program for the community to provide access to solar devices which also allows for training to teach them like what these devices are best used for, how they're used and how they work. Creating safer streets and alleys in a city where the lights had previously been repossessed uh, by local utilities many years back, leaving the city in the dark. As well as employing people from the community to help develop the communities from which they come. 
The project will gain so much success that this is what happened. RCI and Detroit will become winners of the Green America Award for People and Planet for Clean Energy for our work team. As a result of our efforts, solar energy has been booming in the neighborhood and been growing at an increasing rate. And we believe that this is due to one main thing, that although what we do is inspire people through the power of solar, this power is not just an electrical power, but an emotional one. You see, for many people, solar is not just a new nifty technology, but rather a promise of a new way of life, of a cleaner future with brighter skies, less reliance on fossil fuels, more freedom from local utilities, safer neighborhoods, and more. So if you're able to take anything out of this talk, let it be possibility. Invest in solar. Invest in yourself. Build more green energy neighborhood projects. Support a child to learn about the renewable energies. In the end, you'll be inspired that you did. Thank you. I challenge, the, challenge all the brothers living in the U.S. of A. that's in predominantly black cities. We, uh, let's have a, a hood challenge contest. Let's see, can we save our people? separate from this devil you see he don't mean you no good we gonna come back with uh maybe one or two more videos for the day and then we gonna call it a night hope to see you tomorrow this is black light stay up stay in tune